it sort of sound well, so which is quite good. Um, even though I'm recording, don't just like sit in silence like you're in some sort of like mausoleum or you're watching some really boring play or something like that. You can ask questions, stop me whenever, all right? I'm just videoing to record it so we've got it to look back on. Right, I.O. is one of those short things that we do in computing because we can't be bothered to write the full name of anything, which is why we love acronyms in computing. It means input output. So this is device input, device output. Okay, and we're gonna talk about signaling. Now when we did the um, fetch execute, showing how the CPU communicated and grabbed those instructions and executed them, we said the final step always was to check to see if there was any interrupts. Anyone wants any attention? Okay. This is what we mean by signaling. It's like, I need some attention. I need some service from you. Okay. And this is the devices, the things we connect to the computer. So the hard disk, the printer. Okay. Remember, boring answers. We'll always start trying to think about how we can include a printer in our answer. Um, and there are two strategies that go on when we're talking about signaling. These are polling and interrupts. And they're used for different reasons. Okay. Now, let's talk about interrupts first. So interrupts are signals that a device sends to say, I need attention. Now, we've got a human equivalent for this that's sticking our arm up. Okay, that's, that's the signal to someone who's speaking that you want to say something. Oi, I want you to stop. I'm interrupting you. I've got something I want to say. Okay? It isn't the person who's speaking who generates the interrupt. It's the, the person who wants to interrupt, who wants to say something, who needs attention, who generates the signal. Okay? So, if we're going to, like, push that back to computers... If a device, like the printer, is out of paper, it generates a signal. It goes, oi, I'm out of paper, do something. Okay. Ultimately, what that leads to is the operating system putting a bit of information on the screen to the user saying, get off your backside and put some paper in the printer. The printer's moaning at me. He's moaning at me, I'm moaning at you. You go and fix the printer. Okay. So we're, the printer and the computer are colluding to get us to do some work, which isn't how computers supposed to work. It's supposed to work for us, not the other way around. Okay, but the interrupt came from the printer. Now we haven't got a look in detail as to what happens. We will in the second year. But all we need to know is that when the interrupt is generated, that it's reacted to. That someone says, someone says the operating system or the CPU goes, okay, let me deal with your interrupt. Whatever it is you want me to do, let me do my job. And we'll see an example of that in a minute when we talk about buffers and transferring data between a hard disk and RAM. Okay. So interrupts generated by the device. And the reason the device generates those is because we don't know when we're going to get interrupted. So the operating system might be running. It doesn't know when the printer is going to have a problem. So we leave it up to the printer to tell us. Okay. A bit like when you're doing your Python programming, I'm not going to just keep saying, I all right, I all right, I all right. I could do. I get really bored. It's better for you to say, Eric, I can just have a bit of help. Okay, so you, you tell me when there's an issue. Okay, so they're generated by the device. We don't know, and the reason we do that is because they can happen at any time. There is no fixed interval. If you're talking about that printer, that printer tells the computer continually that it's got a jam, even though it hasn't. <laughs> so it makes you go over, open it up, close it again, and you go, oh, oh, no, maybe not. Maybe I didn't have a jam. Ha, 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 ha. Okay. But these can happen at any time, which is why we have to, on the fetch execute cycle, constantly check to see if an interrupt needs handling. Polling, on the other hand, is where we ask the device if it wants attention. And we do it regularly. Okay? 
good example of this is a joypad or a joystick on a game machine. So you could set up your joypad so that every time a user presses a button, we generate an interrupt. And then the game has to react to that button being pressed. But we know when we, when we create a game, we've got a basic structure. We check inputs, do game logic. This is a very, very basic structure of what a game looks like. Uh, draw graphics. And we do that continually. Okay, so we react to the input, use that maybe to change what's happening with the logic of the game, and then draw it, and then we do it again and again. So we're always going to be asking, or checking to see what the inputs are. So there's no point, we might get an interrupt when we're in the middle of drawing the graphics. We don't want to like go, oh, hang on a minute, I was drawing something really complicated, but I will stop to see that you press the pause button or something. Okay, or you press the shoot button. But actually, I don't really want to care about that at the minute, I'm trying to draw some graphics. So if we let the joypad generate interrupts, that would be stupid. So what we do instead is we ask on a very regular interval, if, your game's run, if you've got a game running at 60 frames a second, you'll be asking the joypad what button to press 60 times a second. Okay, because when they say a game's running at 30 frames a second, what they mean is the logic and the updating of the screen is happening 30 times every second. So we're getting through all the logic, all the code, all the graphics code, 30 times a second. That's what we mean by that. All right. People use it as a measure of how fast their PC is. When they're playing a game with full detail on it, yeah, I can get 12 frames a second. And the reason you get really laggy response is because you're only checking what the state of the keyboard, the mouse, or the joypad is 12 times a second. So you might be moving it quite a lot. It doesn't react in time. Okay, and that affects the game logic. So we don't do interrupts, we do polling. And we always do this where we know that we're going to need to communicate with the device on a very regular basis. So in the example of the pad, we'll say to the game pad, what buttons have you got? It will respond, give you the data, and then we'll use that data. You'll see this when we start messing about with um, XNA Game Studio later on in the year. Okay, and have a look at like making like basic game stuff. So we'll have a regular thing where we say, okay, what are the state of the buttons? And we'll ask once every time around the game loop. We'll check all the input code. Polling is what I would be doing if I went and said, Kieran, are you all right? Umo, are you all right? 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 Uh, uh, I'd start just pointing in there because I get fed up with saying everybody's name and speaking. Not very practical. I spend, if I do polling, I'm spending a lot of my time talking to you lot directly one, one at a time. If you were all devices. So it's better for me to be getting on with whatever I'm doing and you to interrupt me. So when we're doing the Python, I can be like marking the bits of work you've given me, checking your glossaries and things like that. And then I'll stop doing that if someone said, oh, Eric, can you come and have a look at this? All right, so that's more efficient use of everybody's time. But polling is what we do on network cards. If you ever look on the back of a machine when it's on, I don't... <laughs> if, you, if you all have a look at the back of your machine, and you should be able to see where the network cable goes in, you should see... I don't know if I can hold mine up. You should... Can't see it. You should see an orange light to indicate it's working, and then there should be another light that's flashing. Okay, that is regular polling of the network card from the server. It's saying, "Do you want to transfer any files?" And it's going around all the computers, doing that, requesting them, because it's quite quite often you're going to want to be regularly communicating with the server with lots of bits of data. It's not just when you're opening a file. There's other stuff going on. The computer's sending stuff back. Log information from the browser and things. So these are just two broad strategies for setting up the communication, the transfer of data. So one where a device says, I'll tell you when I need some assistance. That's the interrupt. The polling, when we need regular information from a device. Now, mice and keyboards can be set up to work either way. 
but generally in windows, the mice are polled. And they're polled more often than we draw the screen. Windows only draws the screen. If you ever used um, Fraps, you get the free version of Fraps and get, to, get it to monitor the Windows desktop, you'll see that you get like seven frames a second on the Windows desktop. Because Windows isn't continually drawing the desktop. It's doing loads of other stuff, more important stuff. It's only when a window moves that it needs to start updating. In general, there might only be a little bit where you're typing if you're doing a Word document. All right, that's updating. So there's no reason to draw the whole screen again. It's very efficient the way that that's drawn. So it can look like it's not doing much work, or it's doing it very slowly. Okay. But the mouse generally moves quite smooth. I don't know whether I'm going to be able to do that. I'm going to try and do an experiment now to see. But if you do a search on the internet, mouse polling rate, I think the standard the standard setting in Windows is 127 hertz. Everyone know what a hertz is? It's not a rental company. Hertz, it's a, it's a cycle per second, isn't it? So if something happens so many times a second. So we're saying Windows, 120 times a second, asks the mouse, where are you? Have you moved? Are there some buttons being pressed? as the scroll wheel be moved, except depending, if you've got one of those fancy mice, it's got like 50 buttons on it that you catch all the time, and you're going backwards and forwards. Anyone got a mouse like that? They've got the stupid buttons on the sides of the mice. I actually use them. Do you? Yeah. Oh, I hate mice like that. It's great. You're like, you're on your web browser, you go, I've pressed back, why have I pressed back? Why has it gone back? Yes, you are. I'm going to actually join him in there. Oh! Copy and pasting stuff is so much easier. Oh, is it? Yeah. yeah. And also, as well, if you use stuff like Premiere Pro, you can set like your cut tool. Your oh, shit, up, Kim. You're going on now. <laughs> <laughs> you're going on. Um, I, I detest them. <laughs> I'm a keyboard, you know, monkey. I, I, I try not to use a mouse at all. Mainly because of RSI, so um, I hate mice anyway. But Windows will poll the mouse um, 120 times a second. Some people try and change that. You can change it if you go into the Windows registry and start messing about to speed it up so you get more smooth uh, movement. Right, so if I, I'll just wait for that to come on. I'm just going to do a little bit. I'm not going to bother wiping off what's on the board. But I'm just going to load up. It's probably better if I do it in fireworks because that's not as fast. I was going to do it in paint, but paint doesn't do much anyway. Um, so let's just load up fireworks. And I'm just going to use a big fat brush in fireworks. So let's make a new document, make it massive. Fills my screen up. Going to check the frame rate when you do stuff. Or... Well, I'm not going to check the frame rate. You, you're going to hopefully, if that warms up, see physically what happens when I use a fat brush and move the mouse really quick. Well you're gonna see yeah you're gonna see the the difference. I better pick a colour other than white or it's not gonna work very well. So smudge old brown. Right, can everyone see that? I know I've got a lot of writing on it but right so I'm gonna draw this. Okay so as I'm moving it slowly that's alright. So Windows is polling the mouse enough to give me a nice smooth curve. Let's just undo that. If I start moving really quickly, <laughs> look at that. It doesn't keep up. <laughs> In fact, that's awful. It didn't keep up at all, all right, with what I was doing. Now the problem is, signaling is great, but what we do is we have priorities as well. So if we're in the middle of something, and we start slowing down, which is what was happening there because that's involving quite a lot of work, I don't hold as often. But we tend to, if you watch what happens, hang on, let me clear it off, it might help. It doesn't update the position of the mouse properly, does it? Okay, so the data is behind. It's not lost any of it as such. If I load up paint and show you what the difference with paint is. You can't use a really fat brush in paint. Um, that's about the biggest. Paint is rubbish, I don't know. So if, if I'm doing the same in paint, 
so I'm drawing a line. You, you see how jaggy that is? So it's like going, eh, 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 eh. That is pulling the mouse. Okay. So it's dependent on what other work we're doing. So we don't always give attention directly to the devices. We might, even if we were doing interrupts, we might be too busy doing the drawing. We're doing some work. We say, well, we'll come back to you when we're ready. I've I'm just got to get this job done. Okay. So it is a miracle that anything works, but the devices, we communicate with these devices, we need to send signals, we do it through polling or interrupts. Then we can transfer data. The mouse hasn't got much data to send to us. Okay? Like I say, button stay, whether it's moved from last time we asked. But when I move that mouse, it isn't Windows that's talking to the mouse, it's the driver, the mouse driver, the little program that knows how to talk and do that transfer of data from the mouse. Windows doesn't. Windows says to the driver, has the mouse moved? The driver goes, I'll go and check for you. So there's a lot of steps going in. And that's in the meantime, we're trying to draw something in paint. <coughs> okay? And if we only have one CPU, we actually can only do one of those jobs at a time. So they all get stacked up. So it's like, oh, the driver goes off, finds off his work, gives that information to Windows, Windows goes, oh, okay, okay. Send that back to the application, so paint goes, oh, I need to draw a point there. It then talks to Windows and says, can you draw me a point? And the graphic, uh, Windows goes, yeah, yeah, of course can. And it goes, oh, crap. right, graphics card, graphics card driver, can you draw me a point on the screen? The graphics card driver goes, yeah, go on then, I'll do that. Draws it on the screen, goes back, Windows goes, yeah, do And Paint knows nothing more about it. The fact that it wasn't Windows that did the drawing at all, it was a graphics card. Okay, so we've got all these things happening in sequence. So this is happening a lot. There's a lot of signaling, a lot of communication going on at a very high rate. Okay, so we try and maximise the time that we're running applications and we're running the system software and try and minimise the amount of time we waste trying to communicate with devices. So we must select the appropriate method. Okay, you could say if you had a keyboard that what you would do is you'd wait for a keyboard to generate an interrupt. You won't keep asking a keyboard, it's quite a slow device. I was going to rub that off the screen there. That was a bit stupid of me. <laughs> ah dear. If I have no fancy electric wipe, well, I had one last year, actually, it didn't work very well. I used them to get rid of it. Um, if I do that, it'll be better. Oh, please. One button press. Um, so, if we had a keyboard, we could poll the keyboard. Okay, so we could poll the keyboard 100 times a second if we wanted to. Is there any point polling a keyboard 100 times a second? No. Why? Yeah, I can't type. I can type reasonably fast, although I can't type very accurately anymore. But I can type reasonably fast, but I cannot press 100 keys in one second. So there's no point in asking the keyboard, are there any keys pressed? Are there any keys pressed? The keyboard's going to go, no, 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 again, no. All right, so it's actually probably with the keyboard better to have an interrupt generated and say, oh, someone's pressed a key, do something with it. All right. But, the keyboard's really slow. It doesn't provide much information quick. So we don't want to tie up the CPU having to go, oh, well, I'll just stop this really important calculation for medical science just to see that you lent on the keyboard and pressed the control key by accident. Okay, so we have to have some sort of system to allow super fast parts of the computer, like the CPU, to communicate with very slow devices, or relatively slow devices. The keyboard is probably the slowest thing we use. Okay, and that magic thing, I'm just going to stop that vid. <laughs>